One night in Istanbul, Turkey, as affluent individuals indulged in their festivities, there was a man named Mehmet toiling away on the outskirts of the city, scavenging through garbage. Despite the grandeur of the evening celebrations, Mehmet's attention was consistently drawn to a particular house nearby. As the night wore on, rain began to fall, prompting Mehmet to leave his scavenging behind. Upon reaching a warehouse, Mehmet was confronted by his younger brother, Gonzalez, also known as Gonzi. Gonzi, who happened to be the supervisor of the warehouse, was visibly upset, insisting that scavenging trash was not Mehmet's responsibility. Despite not being biologically related, Gonzi was deeply concerned about Mehmet's deteriorating health. Mehmet was battling kidney failure due to overexertion, and his condition was worsening. They hurriedly brought Mehmet to the hospital, but upon arrival, his condition had worsened considerably. The hospital staff did not immediately attend to him. Instead, they instructed him to take a queue number and await his turn. However, the situation took an unexpected turn when a woman with a glamorous appearance arrived with her son. The hospital staff promptly assisted the child, and at that moment, Mehmet felt a sense of familiarity with the woman. After a thorough examination, the doctor informed Mehmet that there still wasn't a suitable kidney donor available for him. During this waiting period, Mehmet made frequent visits to the hospital, yet the response remained consistent. He needed to wait for a kidney donor patiently. Following his kidney dialysis, Uncle Tarzin came to pick them up. Uncle Tarzin, along with their adoptive parents, had raised Mehmet and Gonzi. During the journey home, Uncle Tarzin inquired about the cost of the operation should a kidney donor become available. Mehmet responded that he had some savings but needed more to cover the entire cost of the operation. He needed to save a bit more before proceeding with the surgery. On their way home, the three of them engaged in light-hearted banter shared laughter and sang together amidst the pouring rain. Mehmet's residence was situated in a narrow alley known as the Alley of Misery. It was the neighborhood where he had spent his childhood, surrounded by prostitutes, drug addicts, and street children who often indulged in inhaling glue before bedtime. Mehmet always reminisced about his childhood memories with his mother, yearning to alleviate his nostalgia. The following morning, after a refreshing bath and breakfast, Mehmet felt rejuvenated. As he made his way to the garbage warehouse, he appeared cheerful and greeted everyone he encountered along the path. He generously gave money to children who sought to purchase glue. His demeanor was starkly different from the previous days. Upon reaching the warehouse, the other scavengers were already waiting for him. Mehmet held the position of the collector, offering employment opportunities to street children who lacked parental care and a place to call home. While conversing with Gonzi, they reminisced about their dreams. They had compiled numerous lists of aspirations, including boarding a plane and staying at a luxurious hotel. However, one dream remained unfulfilled, locating their birth mother. Mehmet made a solemn promise that one day he would find her. In contrast to Mehmet, Gonzi preferred to relish life without delving into his past, and they commenced their work as scavengers. Upon completing their tasks and receiving their wages, Gonzi arrived later than the rest. When Mehmet suggested that he weigh the box he had collected, Gonzi expressed his desire to attend an event where he intended to beg at the entrance to earn extra money that day. In solitude, after calculating his daily earnings, Mehmet wished to save the money and stash it beneath the couch. Suddenly, an unusual sound caught his attention. It turned out there was a child there, and the boy appeared frightened. Mehmet cautiously approached him and inquired about his name and whether he had a home, but the boy remained silent. Finally, as a last resort, Mehmet offered him a meal and the boy immediately sat down as though he hadn't eaten in days. However, he still refrained from speaking. Mehmet resorted to threatening to involve the police which prompted the boy, named Ali, to reveal that his mother had discarded him in a trash bag. Mehmet observed the numerous bruises on Ali's body, indicating that he had been subjected to abuse and asked to have inflicted these injuries. All Ali disclosed was that his stepfather was responsible. Mehmet decided to bring Ali to his residence, where the boy eventually fell asleep. Mehmet contacted Gonzi and shared the story of the child he had found inside at the trash bag. Upon seeing Ali, Gonzi was deeply surprised and recommended reporting the situation to the police, but Mehmet declined. Instead, he resolved to care for Ali and implored Gonzi to refrain from informing Uncle Tazin about the matter. Eventually, Gonzi agreed to keep the secret. The following day, Mehmet sought out clothing and other essentials for Ali while waiting at the clothing store. 
There, he encountered a mother and her son whom he had seen at the hospital recently. However, he noticed bruises on the child's face. Mehmet inquired about the child's condition, which caused the woman to depart in fear abruptly. On a different day, they all visited a traditional Turkish public bath together. While bathing Ali, Mehmet couldn't help but feel sorrow for the bruises that covered Ali's body. Meanwhile, Gunti enjoyed the bath with the other children. During their time there, one of the children inquired about the meaning of the tattoo on Gunzi's waist. He explained that the tattoo depicted his parents, even though he had never known what they looked like since birth. Nevertheless, he held on to the dream of one day meeting them. This revelation led to a joyous atmosphere with all the children joining in songs and laughter. Following their bath, Mehmet, Ali, and Gunzi had lunch at a burger joint. Not knowing Ali's exact birthday date, Mehmet planned to throw a birthday party for him that evening. He took Ali to a cake shop to select a cake. There, Mehmet recognized the shopkeeper, as he often purchased cakes there to celebrate the birthdays of the street children who lacked parents and didn't know their birth dates. While in the shop's kitchen, Mehmet requested slightly outdated cakes from the shopkeeper to reduce the cost. However, as Mehmet was choosing a cake, he suddenly heard Ali scream. It turned out that someone had attempted to kidnap Ali, which left Mehmet furious with Gunzi for leaving Ali unattended at night. Ali's birthday celebration commenced and all the children enjoyed themselves, dancing and having a good time. Gunzi, however, appeared somber due to the earlier incident. His thoughts turned to his brother, who had a deep affection for Ali. Eventually, it was time to blow out the birthday candles. After lighting the candles, Mehmet instructed Ali to make a wish before blowing them out. Ali struggled to blow out the candles, leading to laughter from everyone. Mehmet invited Ali to join him in making a wish together. Afterward, Mehmet and Ali sat alone, gazing at the city. At that moment, Ali recited a heartfelt prayer before blowing out the candle. In his prayer, Ali expressed his yearning for wealth and his desire to rescue his mother from the clutches of his cruel stepfather. The following day, Mehmet took Ali to the beach, teaching him how to swim. Later that night, after tucking Ali into bed, Mehmet headed to the barn to construct a cart that would allow Ali to accompany him in scavenging and saving money for his mother. Unexpectedly, Uncle Tarzin arrived at the barn. They sat down for a conversation while enjoying tea together. Uncle Tarzin had come to discuss Ali's situation and Mehmet felt disappointed that Gonzi had divulged the secret. Nevertheless, Mehmet asserted his commitment to caring for Ali until the boy was ready to reunite with his mother. He firmly believed that all parents should love their children. Uncle Tarzin, however, attempted to awaken Mehmet to the harsh reality that not all parents were good. Hearing this, Mehmet fell silent. The following morning, Mehmet called out to Ali in front of their house, but the street children present there began to laugh for an unknown reason. When Ali emerged, he discovered two garbage carts already prepared. Mehmet had spent the entire night crafting the carts so that they could work together, allowing Ali to collect money to save his mother. Before beginning their work, Mehmet invited Ali to join him in pushing a cart. After their labor, and just before putting Ali to bed as usual, Mehmet would gaze at a photo of himself with his mother. He also found his favorite childhood toy car and gave it to Ali, who was overjoyed to receive the new toy. After Ali had fallen asleep, Mehmet headed to the warehouse and encountered street children who were intoxicated from sniffing glue. He urged them to steer clear of such harmful substances and not to influence Ali to engage in such behavior. While in the warehouse, Mehmet's kidney ailment flared up. Thankfully, he had a supply of medication on hand. Feeling unwell, Mehmet decided to head home, but on the way, he discovered a gathering of street children in front of his house. It turned out that while he was away, they had coerced Ali into inhaling glue, claiming that it would help him reunite with his mother due to his profound longing. Mehmet brought Ali back home, and though initially reluctant due to fear of his stepfather, Ali ultimately agreed after Mehmet assured him that he would help rescue his mother. They embarked on a long journey to find an address. Along the way, Ali fell silent and fixated on an apartment building. Shortly after, a well-dressed man emerged from the building, causing Ali to cower behind Mehmet. It was revealed that the man was Ali's abusive stepfather, the one responsible for his previous beatings. Mehmet instructed Ali to wait while he pursued the man, but unfortunately, he lost track of him. Upon returning, Mehmet was shocked to find Ali in tears and hidden inside a trash bag, his face bearing fresh bruises, possibly from the scavengers in the area due to Ali's scavenging in their territory. 
Mehmet is filled with rage, leading to confrontations with scavengers in the vicinity and leading to Mehmet being rushed to the hospital. The nurse reveals that if the police had arrived late, Mehmet would have faced a near-death experience. As he lies there, all that occupies Mehmet's thoughts is Ali. He repeatedly queries the nurse about Ali, but she clarifies that there is no child named Ali. Dizziness overwhelms Mehmet, as half of his blood is now in the dialysis machine. Even when Mehmet inquires about Ali's condition from Gonzi, all he receives in response is that Ali is nowhere to be found. Hearing this, Mehmet panics and attempts to escape from the hospital. Gunzi then transports the ailing Mehmet to a warehouse. Upon reaching the warehouse, Mehmet shifts a sofa and retrieves all his savings intended for his surgery expenses. Uncle Tarsen arrives and attempts to dissuade Mehmet, but Mehmet persists in wanting to utilize his savings to aid Ali. Mehmet even resorts to threatening them with a knife to make his point. Eventually, they relent and allow Mehmet to depart in Uncle Tosin's car despite his pain. Mehmet moves slowly toward the apartment door where Ali used to live. At the door, a grandmother is present. She does not appear surprised, as if she is accustomed to Mehmet visiting their home. However, the grandfather is irritated and promptly ejects Mehmet, stating that Ali no longer resides there. Mehmet forces his way inside, brandishing a knife. He searches every room for Ali but needs help to get through. Finally, Mehmet enters a room that stands out from the rest, a room that revives old memories and childhood wounds. Then, from behind, the grandfather and grandmother call out Mehmet's full name, Mehmet Ali. They have just moved in, yet they know that the place they now call home was once the residence of Mehmet Ali's family. In this very house, young Mehmet Ali endured torment at the hands of his stepfather. Unable to bear witnessing her son's suffering, his mother takes Mehmet away and places him in a garbage sack. Since that time, from childhood to the present, he has lived in solitude despite being a caring older sibling to all his adopted brothers and sisters. Mehmet Ali yearns for his mother, a longing that still lingers.